In today's lab, we're going to determine the identity of an unknown ionic compound. Now, ionic compounds are made up of cations and anions, and there are various chemical tests that can show the presence of a particular cation or anion. Uh, we're going to run those tests with a bunch of known compounds that will give us a positive result and show what it looks like when these ions are present, and then we're going to repeat those same tests with our unknown. Uh, hopefully we should get one positive result for a cation and one positive result for an anion and by taking those uh, results we can determine the identity of our unknown. In this lab we're going to carry out a few tests for various anions. We're going to test uh, for the presence of chloride using lithium chloride. We're going to test for the presence of iodide uh, using sodium iodide as a source of iodide. Uh, we're going to use potassium sulfate as our source of sulfate when we test for sulfate. Uh, and we're going to use sodium carbonate as our source of carbonate uh, for the test for that ion. Um, after we're done testing all, uh, you know, just showing the test for these various anions, uh, I'll run the same tests again uh, with each of the unknowns so that you can see what the, uh, you know, you could test for the presence or absence of each of these ions in your unknowns. All right, I've set up a well plate over here. Um, as you can see, it's uh, labeled kind of similarly to the way it is in your uh, lab worksheet. All right, so I have uh, each of the columns represents uh, the uh, each of the ions we're testing for, and in each row we're going to do various uh, tests for particular ions uh, and see what shows up. So, for example. In the first row, we're going to add, uh, you know, we're going to do a silver ion test, which usually shows the presence of halides like chloride or iodide. Um, and then in the second row, we're going to use uh, barium nitrate, which is usually a test for sulfate ions, uh, as you'll see. And, and finally, the uh, present, we're just going to use only nitric acid in the last row, uh, which should be a test for carbonate. But, Anyway, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. So let's add uh, a few drops of each of these uh, salt solutions to provide the ions we're testing for. All right, so I'm going to add five drops each. Pour in here. Add some sodium iodide to this one, to this row. In our third column, we're going to add. Uh, Sodium sulfate, so each of those wells has sulfate present. And in this last column, we're going to add drops each of our sodium carbonate solution. So we have carbonate present in each of these. All right, so it's probably a little hard to see because they're clear solutions against a white background. I guess if I move this over to the black bench top, you can see that we have each of these solutions present in each of those cells. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, silver ion test uh, to test for halides, uh, in this case chlorides and iodide. Uh, to do this, we're going to use uh, some silver nitrate. I'm going to add about three drops of this across the board. We're going to see if any precipitates form. Uh, then we're going to add another five drops of nitric acid and see if any of those precipitates disappear. Uh, and then finally, we're going to add some ammonium hydroxide, uh, you know, about 10 to 12 drops of that, uh, to see if uh, that affects any precipitates that 
you know, may or may not have disappeared. So. I'm going to remove this uh, white paper just because uh, the precipitates might be easier to see against the dark background of the, of the bench top. Uh, just as a reminder before I do that, uh, we're testing across this first row. All right, so we're going to have our chloride, iodide, sulfate, and carbonate. Um, and so I'll, you know, add our silver ions across that, across the board there, uh, followed by nitric acid, followed by ammonium ions. All right, uh, I'll replace the, um, the swell plate back on the paper once I'm done, just so we can keep track of which one's which, but uh, just a heads up, I'm about to do that. All right, so first up, we have our three drops of silver nitrate that we're adding. So uh, across the board there. Alrighty, so there you have our four well plates, and hopefully you can see um, yeah, the cloudiness uh, shows up in some of, or yeah, in most but not all of these. All right, so just as a reminder, uh, this first one had chloride ions in it, the second one had iodide ions, the third one had uh, has uh, sulfate ions in it, and this last one has carbonate. Okay. All right, so next up, we're going to add some nitric acid to each of those wells. All right, so five drops each. See what happens. I'm going to give these a gentle swirl just to make sure they're mixing up well. So please note that the uh, white precipitate still stays for our chloride and iodide, or I guess that's more of a yellowish precipitate actually for the iodide. But anyway, the precipitate stays. Uh, notice the formation of bubbles here and the disappearance of the white precipitate in the case of our carbonate. Finally, we're going to add some ammonium nitrate, I believe about 10 to 12 drops. All right, so again, let's uh, get that ready. All right, so let's have a look at each of our solutions. So, we're going to add some to our chloride sample here. See what happened there. I'm going to stir this up so you can. Okay, so observe what happened to that precipitate there. Uh, let's add some to the sample of our iodide. there. But notice what happened to that. But I think maybe I have a little bit of excess here, so let's add some more in there. Okay, so notice what happened to the precipitate there. Let's add some to here, though again, we don't really have any precipitate there, so doesn't look like that did anything, but oh well. And then finally, we'll add some here. Again, didn't really have a precipitate there either, so, or well, we no longer had a precipitate there. All right, so there's our final observation of, uh, you know, the addition of ammonium at the end there to all four wells. So as a reminder, we added silver uh, nitrate, or basically silver ions across all four,
uh, then nitric acid, and finally ammonium. Um, please note that out of all of these, um, you know, we have uh, still have our precipitate present in our iodide well. So just as a reminder, we had chloride, um, iodide, sulfate, and then carbonate in here. Um, so while the precipitate disappeared with nitric acid for the chloride, uh, it did not for the iodide. So that might be a key distinction there between chloride and iodide. All right, next up we have the barium ion test. Uh, so we're going to, in our second row uh, of our wells here, we're going to add barium nitrate, uh, followed by nitric acid. All right, so uh, I'll add barium, nit uh, barium ions across the board there, and uh, followed by our uh, nitric acid. So again, I'm going to move this off of the white paper so you might be able to see any precipitates forming or disappearing a little bit easier. Um, and yeah, so we'll go from there. All right, let's start off by adding three drops of barium nitrate to each of our samples. So here we have, uh, you know, we're adding this to our chloride. sulfate as a reminder. That's our carbonate. Okay, so notice the uh, formation of, you know, precipitates or lack thereof for, you know, just a reminder, we've got chloride, iodide, uh, sulfate, and carbonate. All right, so next we're going to add a few drops of nitric acid. And then to our um, sulfate. Okay, notice, you know, any reaction lack thereof. And then finally to the carbonate. All right. So again, notice the formation of bubbles there. Um, let's uh, shake that a little gently, see if we can swirl that up. Yeah. Anyway, so this is a final reminder. We added uh, barium nitrate, so barium ions across the board here, followed by nitric acid. Um, again, notice the, uh, remember that we had precipitates for our sulfate and carbonates. Uh, notice that the uh, sulfate uh, precipitate didn't disappear with um, with the addition of nitric acid, whereas in the case of the barium carbonate, it did. So, All right. So for our last test, we're going to just add nitric acid to our four samples. Uh, again, I'm going to do this off onto the uh, dark background of our bench top here to make this a little bit easier to see. Okay, so. And remember, in these wells, we've got chloride, uh, iodide, sulfate, and carbonate. So let's look what happens when we add a few drops of nitric acid to each of them. And so here's our sulfate. And finally, to our carbonate. go. So, all right, just as a reminder, um, you know, there are chloride, iodide, and sulfate. We don't really see anything, uh, though, of course, please observe the bubbles that we had see for our um, addition of nitric acid to our sodium carbonate. Now, ordinarily, if you were doing this uh, in lab by yourself, you'd have only one unknown with you. So, uh, I would suggest just uh, you know using your same well plate and using one of these last two empty columns to run your uh, unknown uh, with the same test, the uh, same silver ion test, barium ion test, and finally acid test. Uh, 
uh, you know, down any one of either one of these empty columns, right? Now, for the purposes of this video, because I want to show all four unknowns, uh, in case your instructor assigns you any one of those four, uh, I'm going to do this on a separate plate. Uh, but just uh, know that if you were doing this in lab, uh, in person, uh, you would just reuse the same plate. All right. Likewise, uh, I'm going to demonstrate the um, cation tests uh, also on the same plate. And in person, you would use this last row over here for testing uh, your various cations. But I'll get into that in a second. Now that we've done a few chemical tests uh, for various anions, uh, we're going to run a few tests for cations. Uh, we're going to test for lithium, uh, provided for here in lithium chloride. We're going to test for sodium, provided here with sodium iodide. We're going to test for potassium, here in uh, potassium sulfate. Uh, we have silver, present in silver nitrate, uh, barium, present in barium nitrate, and uh, iron-3, so uh, also known as a ferric ion, uh, present in iron-3 chloride, commonly known as ferric chloride. Now your directions have you using a whole new well plate. So you can see I've got uh, you know, each of these uh, columns labeled for each of the ions we're testing. Um, uh, to be honest with you, the only thing we need this well plate for is for the potassium thiocyanate test uh, for iron ions. Uh, so rather than wasting a whole well plate just to use one row, um, we're going to just take the old well plate that we had, that we used for the anions test, right? So you can see I, I have a few of these already uh, filled up from our previous anions test. Uh, I haven't washed this out yet. Uh, but really all we're going to do is we're just going to use this last row over here um, to do our potassium thiocyanate test. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and add uh, five drops of each of our uh, salt solutions to those wells. Again, so that we'll have, uh, you know, lithium, sodium, potassium, silver, barium, and iron-3 ions present in each of those wells. Uh, and then we'll test uh, using potassium thiocyanate across the board. All right, so I've gone ahead, ahead and added five drops of each of the solutions to their respective wells. And now we're going to go ahead and add three drops of our potassium thiocyanate uh, to each of those wells in turn. So here we have our lithium ion. And we're going to add it to our sodium ion. Now to our potassium ions, which shouldn't really do anything because it's already a potassium salt. Uh, here we've got silver. Oh, interesting. It, you might have trouble seeing that. I'll, I'll move this to the dark background uh, in a second so then you can see what that looks like. But hopefully you should be able to tell uh, that a white precipitate's formed. But again, I'll move it over in a second so you'll be able to see that a lot better. Uh, here we have our barium ion, so I'm going to go ahead and add two, three drops there. And finally I'm going to add three drops to our iron ions. Oops, that was only one drop, let's add a little bit more. So it should be kind of obvious that something's happened. There we go. Alright, so just in case uh, so difficult to see. I'm going to move this over onto the dark background here. So there's our various samples. So just as a reminder, this was lithium, sodium ions, potassium ions, silver ions. Right uh, over here we had uh, barium ions, and then finally over here we had our iron ions, which it's kind of hard to see in the back on the dark background, but here you can see it on the white background, it shows up, okay? And likewise, on the black background, you can see the, um, what's it, the precipitate that formed with the silver ions. Alrighty, so I'm gonna do uh, test some unknowns here uh, for the purposes of this video, but just as a reminder, uh, if you were doing this in lab, you would only need one well plate. You could get all the results you need uh, by setting up your well plate like this. So basically, each of our 
um, you know, these first three rows would be used for the anion tests, including for your unknown, uh, whichever unknown you had picked uh, using, you know, any one of these columns. And in this last row, we would do our cation tests with our potassium thiocyanate. Okay. Now you'd have three spare uh, cells left over that you could do your uh, test your unknown with potassium thiocyanate as well. Uh, but like I said, you could use one plate for this, um, you know, for this lab if you were doing this in person. Uh, for the purposes of this uh, demo, though, uh, I'm going to do this all, uh, all of the unknowns over here on a separate well plate. All right, with uh, you know unknowns A, B, C, and D in our four columns, uh, and in each of our rows, I'll do our silver ion test, our barium uh, ion test, our acid test, and then finally a test for our uh, cations with potassium thiocyanate. Okay, in this last row. All right. So uh, again, please don't use all of these unknowns. Uh, use uh, the results for whichever unknown uh, your instructor assigns you. All right, so we have our four unknowns set up, A, B, C, and D. Uh, I've gone ahead and put uh, five drops of each, uh, well, into their respective rows. So there's five drops of unknown A in each of the uh, cells in this uh, one column, and five drops of B in each of the, the wells in this column, and so on. Here's C, and here's D. All right, so first up, we're going to test uh, with silver nitrate. I'm going to add three drops of my silver nitrate to each of the cells in the first row. Let's do that over here. Oops, actually, uh, what might be a good idea is I will do this over a dark background so it's easier to see the formation of a white precipitate necessary. So let's try that here. Okay, so let's add three drops of silver nitrate to each of these. There we go. Unknown C. Finally to unknown D. All righty, so I've added silver uh, nitrate to each of those four cells. All right, so if you recall, the next step is to add nitric acid to each of those. All right, so let's add some nitric acid to each one. Oops, there we go. So I'll do that first one. All right, then to the second one. Third one, finally to unknown D, okay, so please observe what's happened when we added nitric acid to each of our four, uh, our four wells, okay. So next we're going to add some ammonium hydroxide to each of these four in turn. All right, so here's our ammonium hydroxide. Give 10 to 12 drops. So here's unknown A. And finally, here's unknown B. Oops, a little bit more there. So there are our four unknowns after we've added um, uh, silver nitrate, uh, nitric acid, and finally ammonium hydroxide to each of those.
All right, so next up we have our barium nitrate and nitric acid addition to our four unknowns. So once again, I'll move this over to the uh, black bench top here so we can see any uh, light colored precipitates forming a little bit more easily. So let's grab our barium nitrate All right, and add that to unknown A. We have unknown C and unknown D. Okay, so observe the formation of precipitates or lack thereof for unknowns A, B, C, and D respectively when we've added barium nitrate. All right, so next up we're going to add some nitric acid to each of those four wells and see what happens to those precipitates uh, as we add that. So here's our nitric acid. Let's add that to unknown A. Unknown B. Unknown C. And unknown D. So hopefully you should make your observations there for the barium ion test for each of our four, or for the anions for our four unknowns. Again, of course, please pay attention to your particular unknown. All right, next up we have uh, for our four unknowns, I'm going to just add nitric acid across the board as a test for carbonate. So though at this point you probably uh, figured out uh, if any of these have carbonate. Uh, but let's do the test anyway. All right, so nitric acid into unknown A to unknown B, unknown C, and finally unknown D. Okay. There we go. That's the addition of acid, nitric acid, to each of our four unknowns. And finally, we're going to add uh, potassium thiocyanate to each of our four unknowns. Uh, so hopefully we can test for the presence of iron uh, or confirm or uh, confirm the presence or absence of iron uh, in each of our unknowns. Okay, for this, I'm going to put this on to our uh, white background here, All right? So it's a little bit easier to see uh, the formation of that, uh, that dark precipitate that we typically see with iron. Okay, so let's go ahead and add our potassium thiocyanate to each of these. So here we have unknown A. Unknown B. Unknown C, unknown D. All right, so there's our four unknowns with uh, potassium thiocyanate added to them. I'm going to put this on our dark background just so you can see, you know, that uh, we don't have any white precipitates with our potassium. Thiocyanate, it's only just the dark precipitate that we had with unknown C. All right, over here we have our setup for the flame tests for lithium, sodium, potassium, and barium ions. So we're going to take, uh, you, you can see over here on the left, we have splints, wooden splints uh, dipped into solutions of uh, each of those cations, so salts containing those cations. Uh, and we're then going to hold them over a Bunsen flame and see what color the flame turns. All right, so to begin, we need to turn on our Bunsen burner. Um, if you've never used a Bunsen burner before, basically a butane gas goes through this uh, tube to the Bunsen burner itself, 
and we have two controls on here. We have this knob on the bottom which controls the uh, gas flow. So if you turn it, you know, clockwise, it uh, cuts off the gas. If you turn it counterclockwise, it opens up and releases more gas. Um, and then if you twist the barrel of the Bunsen burner, uh, it controls how much air goes in through the sides here. Okay, so if you find that your flame isn't very, um, you know, isn't uh, a sort of a blue color and a nice cone shape, uh, instead of it's kind of yellow and flickery, uh, that usually tells you that it's not getting enough air. Okay, and so you want to adjust the air supply accordingly. Okay, now to ignite the stream of butane, we're going to uh, use a flint, which is basically, you know, just uh, something that creates a spark. And, um, you know, first of all, we're going to have to turn on our gas supply over here using this main tap. So let's do that. There we go. Uh, this is what a good flame should look like, uh, sort of blue cone within a cone, all right? Uh, if it looks like this, kind of yellow and flickery, like it's kind of wispy, you can see it's kind of moving all over the place, uh, and you can see a lot of yellow around there, that's generally a bad sign, all right? That means you're not getting enough air. So I'm gonna turn this barrel back counterclockwise, and that's going to allow more air to get in. Okay. You can see that nice sort of blue cone in there that tells you that this is a, a good constant flame. All right, let's start off our various flame tests. So we'll start off with our lithium. Okay. So there, we're going to take our Stick that's dipped with that, hold it over our flame. You can see that nice sort of red, bright red color that's coming out of that. There we go. All right, next up we have sodium. There's a bright yellow color in the flame. It's kind of like a golden yellow. All right, next up we have potassium. There's our oops, focus. There we go. Hard to see, but oh, actually, down that should show up. You can see that purplish color around it. Okay. And finally, we have barium. So here's our barium solution. So that comes into focus there. Also, all right. So let's finally test that. See some of that green color. So the barium um, flame test didn't show up very well, uh, at least not on camera. If if you're attending this lab in person, you should be able to see that green color pretty easily. Uh, but I noticed that it doesn't show up very well uh, due to the resolution of the camera. Uh, so I'm going to try this again. Um, this time I'm going to take uh, solid barium uh, chloride all right, as a source of my barium ions and see if that shows up a little bit better. Let's take a little bit of that solid. There you go. Hopefully you should be able to see some of that green over there now. Yeah, ignore the, uh, I think the uh, color of the burning wood that gives a little bit of that orangish color, that kind of overshadows some of the green, uh, makes it a little bit harder to see, but hopefully if I hold it by the edge there, you should be able to see some of that green. All right, now it's time to test the various unknowns. So let's start with unknown A. Okay. 
now we have unknown B. Next we have unknown C. Finally, we have unknown D. 